the Union Pacific 800 series, the FEF, one of the holy trinity of late UP steam power. When Atherin announced they were re-releasing their FEF model, I decided to jump in and pre-order one, specifically 844, the only steam locomotive never retired by a Class 1 railroad in the United States. An FEF model was on my list for a long time, and then it wasn't, for reasons I'll get into later. The packaging is reminiscent of their Race to Promontory Point edition of 4014, which is very nice. We have a bag of additional details to add and the working front coupler. I don't have a lot of Atherin models, but this is exactly how I like my models to come packaged. Lots of foam and plastic wrap to protect the finish and the details. The shine on this model is glossy enough to look like a clean and well taken care of locomotive without looking like a toy. It's not too glossy. The white walls and striping are very sharp, as is the overall detail. It's very crisp. The tender features the same level of detail. I'll have to open this up eventually to fit the decoder. I did opt for the DCC ready version in this case. For two years I've had a TCS WoW sound decoder that needed a home, and I figured this would be an excellent candidate. But first, I wanted to see how it performs with my terrible train set controller. I really only use this to see that the model can run and that it's functioning. Now that I can see that it does, I'm going to open up the tender. Cracking open an Atherin centipede tender is only slightly less infuriating than opening a Rip Rossi centipede tender. I'm not going to do a full breakdown, but I recommend watching the video from Soundtracks on how to do so. Uh, it is a pain in the butt and one of the things I like more about the Broadway Limited model of the FEF. Upon opening the tender, I was somewhat disappointed by the lack of a speaker. I figured that would be standard across both DCC and DCC ready versions, but it's really my own fault for not researching that. It's not a big deal as I have a scale sound system speaker on order. But for this brief test, I wanted to hear it as well, so I quickly soldered in an iPhone 4 speaker to the board as a temp solution. Rather than reassemble the tender, I just slightly put the shell back on the chassis, hence it looks wonky. No CVs besides the bell and whistle were changed, so the chuff rate will be off. Really, I'm just looking for slow speed performance here. And you know what? I'm really impressed with how well the slow speed performance is with this WoW sound decoder. And a quick look at the headlight. It's a little more on the yellow side of warm white than I care for, but it should be fine. And after so many days of waiting, the scale sound system speaker has arrived, and I went ahead and mounted it to the underside of the oil bunker in the tender. This is their full force range, a 15 by 20 by 25 millimeter uh, rectangular speaker. There's plenty of room to fit more, more than one speaker in here, or a bigger speaker, but I've always been so impressed with the quality of scale sound systems that I really only need the one, and it does sound great. Uh, why don't we take a look at the locomotive uh, as it runs and hear how it sounds.
A long time ago, I purchased an FEF off of eBay, a River Rossi 835 in the two-tone gray with the yellow striping. And it was scuffed, it was not running really well. I, I only paid about a hundred bucks for it, and it just did not look as good as it did in the photos as these things often do. And, well, here it is. But wait, that's not two-tone gray with yellow striping. And no, it isn't. This is what it used to look like. I decided to remotor this thing completely as the running characteristics were not great with that can motor that it had. Here you can see the original motor on the left with a potential replacement on the right. And in remotoring, I also had to rework the universal joint between the motor and the gearbox. So I went with a Hobby Town of Boston drivetrain and it's rock solid. When River Rossi released this model, it came with a coal burning tender, which is not accurate, especially considering the locomotive itself has no ash pans. So I decided to take the coal bunker out and replace it with some styrene card. Also out of styrene card, I built this uh, little toolbox on the side that you often see on these locomotives. The FEF seems to have them a lot. And I repainted the entire thing uh, with uh, Tamiya flat black uh, and some Tamiya primer as well. The wheels are still a lighter shade than they should be for this model, uh, but I really like the look. It's a very even paint, paint job, which I'm very happy with. And here it's posed with the uh, 4003 tender. I just wanted to pose it with a tender that I had on hand. Overall, the detail is really nice. I had considered doing what I did to the uh, 4003 and stripping this of its piping detail that was molded on, but there's really not a lot. Compared to the 844 from Athern, this is a this model holds up, I'll be honest. Uh, at least I think it does. Let's take a look inside. So my thinking here was to cut out some of the weight inside to make room for a motherboard that I could mount there and keep the decoder in the locomotive, just have a self-contained unit there. Uh, whether or not I'll still do that when the time comes, I'm not sure. I'm not happy with this motor. This is a Mabuchi motor from eBay. It's a little too slow. The top end speed is just not enough for a passenger locomotive such as this. Uh, it would be perfect for a small driver freight locomotive, but I'm not happy with how fast it goes. The drivetrain is, like I said, it's solid and I absolutely love it. So I'm looking at uh, replacing this motor with something different and just mounting it in there. It should be fine. Uh, it does run very well. There's no binding. It's just, it's just slow. Eventually there will be a motherboard mounted probably in the boiler. I think I'm going to stick with that for now. The speaker will probably go in the tender. For the smoke box, I'm going to have the uh, working uh, Mars light in there as well. I put a piece of styrene tube there so I could have a separate red LED up there in that portion of the smoke box. The tender itself, it's a little glossy because I was applying decals at one point and those need to go on a glossy surface. Uh, this one I was going to renumber as 838. I think I'm still going to keep that. However, I might redo these decals. For the rear tail lamp, I am using Micro Crystal Clear. Give me a nice lens. On the bottom of the chassis, I drilled a bunch of holes for the speaker. I added some Micromark rivet decals up here, and the hatch is, well, I made that out of styrene. It's not great, but I think from a distance it's not too bad. I still need to add some details up here to make it a little bit better. You can take off the front and look down inside. It's just an empty tube with two ends. And then there's a cut at the bottom of this piece to allow wires to pass through. There will need to be wires at least for the tail light. And you can see that toolbox looks really good painted. I'm actually pretty proud about that. Eventually this will be a nice looking FEF model, and yeah, when it's all finished. I'm almost tempted to keep the smoke deflectors off, but 
I don't think an FEF3 ever really ran without its smoke deflectors. Looking at the two, the Athern model has clear advantages in detail over the, I think it's late 70s, the Riverasi molding is from, but that molding still holds up pretty well, I will say. You can see the differences between an 844 and a non-844. And interestingly enough, the Riverasi model is a little bit longer by maybe three millimeters or so. But I love both of these models and I'm very happy to own them. And eventually, 844 will have a working uh, sister to run alongside. Maybe that one will be mostly hauling freight, so it's probably going to look a little bit more worse for wear. But overall, I'm very happy to own uh, the Athern model itself. I considered getting the Broadway Limited model, but part of my motivation was I had this decoder that I wasn't going to use, and I figured I, if I get the Broadway Limited model, I'm going to have to rip out all the electronics, and that's not something I really wanted to do. Plus, I wasn't too jazzed about the smoking whistle, and I don't care for smoke in general. It's something I disable or remove from all of my models. Uh, but yeah, I would eventually like to own uh, a Broadway Limited FEF, just so I can say that I have uh, three from different manufacturers. I think that would be a uh, nice to add to the collection someday. But that's going to do it for, for now. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video and a little look at something new, something old, and uh, maybe I'll get the other one running as well. Maybe we can do some double heading or something. Who knows? But for now, I want to thank you all so much for watching.